know why we come to Lindau. As a laureate, what do you get out of coming to Lindau? Coming to talking to you as a student, not only as an interviewer. This, this is why I come, to talk to young people, or to excite young people, or to interact with young people. Each year at the Lindau meetings in Germany, young researchers come together to learn from Nobel Prize winners as well as from each other. I study what I like to call the molecular basis of you are what you eat. So I look at both how the food you eat changes your gene expression and how the genes that you have change the way you interact with food. My research focuses on the development of nanoparticles for drug delivery and the reason that's important is because we haven't got cures yet for things like cancer and heart disease and I want to try and make an impact on that. But there's much more to the meetings in Lindau than seeking scientific collaboration. They also inspire discussion about wider questions in science. Most Nobel Prize winners are middle-aged or elderly men. Only three women laureates were present at Lindau this year. As a female researcher, I'm particularly interested in meeting the female laureates, so Ada Yonath is someone I'm particularly interested in meeting. Ada Yonath won her Nobel Prize for work on the structure of the ribosome, a complex molecular machine found within all living cells. So why the ribosome as opposed to any other molecule that we didn't have the structure for at the time? I had a list of what I don't understand, very, very long list. I took the top. No, Fair no, enough. no, it's, it's, it's a joke. <laughs> because it was interesting and uh, because I found, the, uh, I, I found the, an idea how I can go on and found a collaborator in Max Planck that was ready to listen to me, although I was known to be... I was the crazy, the stupid, the village fool, whatever. Yeah. I couldn't care less I, because I saw that we we advance. So when you first started working on on the ribosome, that people called you a dreamer? Yeah. I, I, I had the perception, you should tell me what you think so too, that the completely lopsided nature of science um, in terms of the male-female ratio um, in the older generation looks completely different in the younger generation here. Yeah. And I don't know whether that is representative in most countries of the students' uh, bodies um, there or whether it's what's been selected at, at Lindell. Yeah. Um, for for you in 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 Australia, yeah, that's an what's your, what's interesting your point. Sense? I mean, I think that I think there's definitely you're right. In the the older generations, maybe it's still more weighted towards male, uh, you know, scientists. But you know, you come here to Lindau, and definitely you're right. There's it's it looks like 50-50 mix, if not maybe if more, more yes, girls. Exactly. You know? and Do we almost have a 50-50 percent of uh, male female? Actually, know that? this. Actually, <laughs> ask the conference organisers yeah, beforehand. Yeah, it? It's 42 to 58. So, so that, 42 female. But, but they yeah, did like, say but there was no deliberate positive selection for okay, females. So it just emerged that yeah. spontaneously. That spontaneously. So that, that, that's fantastic. This is yeah. good. It means there are a lot of females now pushing into the sciences. Yay! And that's <laughs> great. Yeah. Not just into sciences, but into uh, good science, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. It's a yeah, competitive so process, are... so that's really good. Yeah. So maybe in the next 65 years, we'll have uh, more than three female laureates? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think the problem for women in science isn't solved because even though we're about 50 50 male female in the young scientists here, as we progress through our careers, more women are dropping out than men. So women still aren't making it to the upper tiers in the research world. So I think that we still have a long way to go to get to equality for gender in science. The important thing that I've learned is the, the courage to tackle the big problems. A lot of the laureates have addressed the fact that science doesn't exist in isolation. So we exist in the world and therefore we have ethical and social responsibilities for the things that we can do with our science. And I think that's been a really important theme and I'm glad to have had that brought up. I mean, it's a fantastic opportunity and one that I'm going to remember for a long time. But I think the other thing that's good is we can take what we've learnt back because only 650 something young scientists got to be here this year but there's so many young scientists around the world yeah. but we can take what we learnt, we learnt and take it back to, to people in our country and share it with them so that's really cool. The beautiful baobab tree, or tree of life, is an African icon. The baobab fruit contains 
four times the potassium of banana, three times the vitamin C of an orange, and twice the calcium of spinach. But the baobab is an orphan. Science has paid little attention to this tree until now. The African Orphan Crops Consortium is harnessing the power of genetics for orphan crops. The baobab tree is the first of 101 plants to have its genome sequenced, assembled, and annotated. And the information will be made available to all unrestricted. Where millions of people are malnourished, this genetic data will help farmers provide the food they need. The genomes will guide African plant breeders so they can create crops that are higher yielding, water and nutrient use efficient, resilient to climate change, and full of nutrition triggering a huge leap forward for the diversity and sustainability of the continent's agriculture.